Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, as well as James chapter 5, verse 16. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for your word, Lord Jesus. Thank you for blessing us in so many different ways, Lord God. You are a great Father and we appreciate you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. All right, so this is the golden rule. Um, it says, so whatever you wish that others would do to you. I think this is considered the golden rule. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. So um, whether it be praying for them, right? Or praying for yourself. So like that, let me go ahead and just do the conflation because that's basically what it is. is therefore confess, James chapter five, verse 16, therefore confess your sins to one another and pay and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. All right. And so just think, okay, if it's saying, therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. All right. And so this is somehow going to um, unlock this healing, right? This healing power. And so it says, therefore confess your sin. So maybe sin could be some sort of block towards your healing, right? Um, it could be causing some sort of release to not occur in your faith. And so um, if you confess your sin, it's basically like testifying, right? When we testify, we overcome. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So we already have the blood of the lamb, Jesus. And the word of our testimony is the confession of your sin, right? And so it says, therefore, confess your sin to one another and pray for one another. So you the you find someone who can pray and you pray with them. This is all a part of iron sharpening iron, right? Staying sharp in the word of God because you're around other believers. So that is very important. God never wants us to forsake that. And so it says, therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed, all right? And so that healing can occur in that portion of your life um, because of the fact that you have confessed that sin, you have released that sin and you, you are trusting that God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of, of your unrighteousness. And, and that is a release that is going to help that healing to occur along with the fact that you are standing with another believer with their faith, right? And that connection, right, is stronger than one cord, right? So that two is better than one and three is very hard to break. And so it says the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. And that's kind of like a catch 22. Well, not, I guess it wouldn't be a catch 22, but it's it's kind of like a, um, it's a self-fulfilling portion of this scripture the prayer of a righteous person, right? And so a righteous person is a person who is found in Christ, a person who is um, under the covering of righteousness that it that comes from Christ, right? And so if you are under that covering and you having faith in that covering over you, then that's all a part of your abide and you're working in power, right? Because you have accepted this, you believe this. It's just like Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness, right? So he was a righteous man because he believed. And so he, in, in the, with us, we are righteous because we believe in the sacrifice of Christ. We believe that Jesus was the son of God. We believe he died on the cross, rose again on the third day so that we can be saved. And so because we believe that and we confess that, that causes us to be righteous. So, and, and now our prayer has 
already immediately begun in its great power, right? And so you have people who are going to be like, oh, no, that's not true because, you know, such and such. Um, I've prayed before and it didn't, you know, do anything. Well, first of all, sometimes things like this, um, the older you get in Christ and you're not exercising that muscle, that muscle becomes atrophied. Sometimes it's even better in a new believer, right? A new believer because their faith is strong there. They had that raw belief in Christ because he said so kind of like a kid, right? And so you tell them something and they believe it and they walk in it, right? And so, but with an adult and older believers, sometimes they, they um, operate with caution and that caution can be like walking in sin, right? So you need to confess your sin to one another, find somebody to pray with and, and pray um, that, you know, that that be released, right? Because you want childlike faith. You want that raw, unadulterated faith. You want that faith to believe that it, oh, it's going to get done. It's going to be done, right? And so, um, when you stand with other believers or an elder in the church or someone like that, it just can really like boost your faith, especially as you confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. All right. And so it says the prayer of the righteous person has great power as it is working. And so um, um, this, the conflation portion of this is exactly what it is. You know, if you are a person who wants to pray with other people, go find people to pray with, right? Um, if you are a person who wants healing for yourself, go and administer healing to others, right? Um, I was, uh, I got prayed for, for my knee, the other day. And I was just saying, you know, I told the elder in our church, um, she's a minister, and she, and I was saying, you know, I really want to be healed of this because, um, I don't, I want to be healed and I want to minister from a place of healing, right? I want to, um, go forth and pray for people and not be like, okay, well, my leg is still, you know what I'm saying? So I was feeling that kind of way. And she was like, no, you don't have to have your full healing in order for you to go out and pray for others to be healed. You can still be standing in faith that God is going to heal you. Right. And so I was like, yeah, you're right. That does make sense because, um, you still believe, right? Even if you haven't seen the manifestation of something, that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And so it says, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them for this is the law and the prophet. So if you want healing, you need to go out and minister some healing. If you want to be blessed financially, you need to go and plant some seeds financially. If you want your children to get scholarships, you need to plant into the scholarship fund. If you want, um, and I forget what my pastor actually said, this is called when you do it financially and you're planting seeds, it's called like direct sowing or something. I don't know, but, um, you plant in the area that you want a harvest, right? It says, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them for this is the law and the prophet. Right. So this is this is what the foundation is built upon. When you say the law and the prophets, that that foundation, that's where we originally got the foundation. And now Christ is the cornerstone of that foundation. We are the living stones that are on top of that foundation. And so everything rests on Christ. And so if you want that, you know, this blessing or that blessing, if you want something special, then you need to go out and you need to do that for someone else. You want people to celebrate you more then you need to go out and celebrate others more. If you want um, to, to be taken care of and 
you you don't want um to ever be lonely and in a nursing home somewhere you need to go to the nursing home and you need to start praying for those people and talking with those people and keeping them company that way that when it's time your time in that part of life then you have what you have planted seed in right so that is the um conflation for today um if if you if we are confessing our sins to one another and praying for one another that you may be healed, then you need to also go and you need to administer that healing to someone else. You need to go forth and and be praying and making a prayer list. And you see your child is in jail, then you need to go and make a list of other people who are going through similar circumstances and praying for the breakthrough of their children getting out, right? It's it's all a part of doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. God is a God of, of rewarding those who are diligently seeking him. But if you're only seeking him for yourself, then, then that is kind of contrary to how we should operate, right? We are supposed to do unto others as we will have them do unto us. So if we want them to do good to us, we need to do good to others. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word, Lord. Help it to open our eyes. Help us to operate differently when we wake up in the morning. If you give us tomorrow, Lord God, if you're willing, we'll live to see it. Lord, help us to be different. Lord, help us to give where we want to be blessed. Help us to give to others us unselfishly and abundantly in the same way that we want to be blessed abundantly help us to give abundantly let us become big givers lord god and help us to just reap harvest from all over the place because we plant so many seeds in so many places lord god help us to just be seed planting people lord god everywhere we go lord god giving children money talking to people giving people hugs who need a hug god Help us to give, give, give from our overflow that you have blessed us with. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Um, if any there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. Forgive me for all my sins. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is going to show you the way and bless your path that God has laid out for you. Um, go forth and read the word, listen to the word, Pray the word and begin to ask God questions about the word. He's going to begin speaking back to your heart and you'll begin to learn the voice of God as you grow in him and you'll begin to trust his voice more and more every day. Um, go ahead and let the Holy Spirit lead you towards finding a church home. Go be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Also, be around other believers so that you can stay sharp in the word of God. And then also go forth and make disciples of all men, telling other people about Christ and his goodness and his eternal life giving self. <laughs> all right, you guys. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.